so it's a bit uh, mysterious to me. Uh, what is uh, what is Moon Day and what is Moon Walk? Uh, and uh, since I'm engaged with uh, the issues of measuring innovation performance in my organization, I think this could be a, a shootable event to attend. Mm -hmm. So that's why I signed up and even invited one of my colleagues to come to join me. As professor and deputy dean at the London Business School and co-founder of the Management Innovation Lab, please welcome Professor Julian Birkinshaw. 2007 Chief Executive of the Year in the UK, 2008 Entrepreneur of the Year, please welcome the CEO of Rock Construction, Garvis Smith. What would you say is the value of uh, management innovation? Management innovation, by definition, is not a product or service that you can sell. What management innovation is, as I see it, is, is an investment in the underlying capabilities and systems, the management systems, if you like, through which value gets created for your shareholders and for your customers and so forth. So if you think about the resource allocation systems in your organizations, the, the capital budgeting systems, you know, these are systems which can be improved that enable you to do more, faster, better. So that's the value. The value is essentially in changing the way that you work, so that out of which you can create enormous improvements in productivity and efficiency and, and innovation. You talked about leadership. Yes. And I know that you, Julian, you're talking about reinventing management mm -hmm. and uh, raising the awareness of what management really is about. So let me hear if you think about the definition of management, look it up, it basically management means getting work done through others, getting, getting things done through people. And if you think about it, management in that respect works in a, in a, in a community organisation, it can work in a network, it can work in a church, it can work in a university. The problem is that our, our concept of the word management has been narrowed and narrowed and narrowed so that it now is used in the context of what the traditional industrialized hierarchical bureaucratic company does. So that is the wrong image, absolutely the wrong, wrong image. From my point of view, we need to reinvent the word and to say, let's take management back to its roots. Management is about getting work done, it's about motivating people, it's about you know, making decisions effectively, it's about setting objectives. We um, talk about leadership in our business, we don't talk about management. Julian and I talked about this earlier. Um, and I have everybody in our business is a potential leader, depending on what the task is at whatever level they are. But in order to be a leader in ROC in any task, you need to get it, understand what ROC is trying to do, understand this focus on us as individuals and delivering a service for our customers. Um, and we believe that that ability to lead comes from both the intellectual understanding of uh, leading and the passion to deliver it. I don't believe you can have one without the other. They have to be in tune and they have to work together. What I think is, uh, is one of the best aspects of this Monday is uh, you get a lot of people coming together to talk about the subject which is normally not talked about. You can always find something in everybody that they feel very deeply and very strongly about. And helping them to recognize that as love is the way we, we, we do that. So we talk to them about how do you feel about your football team when it wins or when it loses? What does that do to you? What would you do if you were working in your mum's house? You know, where would you leave that? How would you care about the work you did and what state you would leave it in and how you would uh, take care to do the job properly? It's also a bit about why we talk about being the local builder. Uh, and that we like people to work very locally to their homes. Not only that they get a good balance between uh, work and uh, their home life, but you don't make a mess on your own doorstep. So my simple logic, and it took me 20 odd years to work this out, was you focus on making the experience for your people something where they really feel valued, 
really feel recognized, rewarded, engaged in something much bigger than themselves. And in that way, you, you expect from them and you create a better service for your customers. I didn't actually expect this at all, talking about uh, management innovation. At the same time, they talk about love and emotions and uh, how they value their employees first before their customers. There have been many studies of, of levels of engagement, employee engagement from country to country. Uh, and typically, the numbers will be something like this. About 20% of the workforce are actively engaged. About 20% are actively disengaged. Now, disengaged here means you know, essentially not even really trying to do the job that you're being paid to do. You know, that basically means you show up to work, you do the bare minimum, and then you go home. And then, of course, the other 60% are moderately engaged. You know, the majority, they kind of enjoy work in some sense. They kind of look forward to the weekend. They do a half-decent job, but they don't go the extra mile. If you can get that 20% up to even 30%, think about the kind of productivity improvements when you've got half as many people, again, who are going that extra mile towards being creative and innovative and passionate about their work. If you look at your organization, how many of the 5,000, is it, employees, mm -hmm. would you say is highly engaged and know the concept of love and mm -hmm. how many of those are getting it? Nine months ago, they reckoned about 35% of the people had got it in the organization, which they were disappointed at. I was really chuffed because I'd started with one. <laughs> yeah, and it's quite a long way to come from one to what by then was about 2,000. We reckon it's now gone beyond 50% because once it begins to build momentum, it becomes self-fulfilling. When you're not the odd one out, it's easier to join in and find means to reinforce what the organization is telling you it believes in. People in businesses that, um, I mean, they've been running the businesses for quite some time. They know how to do it. And uh, if someone suggested to innovate their way of management, people will automatically uh, try to resist that. So uh, but like I think it's America, good to have this crowd together for, from many different companies and just uh, having a dialogue about it uh, as opposed to only reading a book about it. So. We did a, a study, we call it Moonshots in Management, Gary and I, and this was in the Harvard Business Review at the beginning of this year. And we identified a series of objectives that we thought that management should be aspiring to. This is like you know, saying we want to crack the human genome. This is a, a big project. What are the big things that we collectively can do as companies and as academics to make the world a, a, a better place? And in fact, the number one was increasing trust and reducing fear. Okay, we did a big survey, 900 people around the world. The biggest single thing that people said they wanted to see differently in organizations was to essentially take fear out and increase the level of trust. We have a view that the, um, what is often called Web 2.0, the technologies that we're all familiar with now for online communities built around the internet, a lot of these technologies are going to facilitate that process. Because if you think about it, the way that we communicate and the way that we make decisions and the way that we come to a verdict about what is a good idea and what is a bad idea on the web, this is a fundamentally non-hierarchical approach. You know, I don't look, check to see if somebody rating a product on Amazon, I don't check to see if he's a senior vice president. What I do is I say, is this somebody who's got a good track record? Is somebody who's making some smart observations? So I think the kind of the democratization of the workplace and the, the elimination of traditional bureaucratic mechanisms is becoming, becoming enabled, if you like, by these very different technologies that are available. You have some exercise sheets. Start working on one uh, assignment sheet based on your company, right? When you've done each step of the assignment, you switch to work on the other sheet with the other person's company. You will be writing some key insights 
in the form it have before we believe that, now we see that. And then when you finish with those three, take a five minute break and join us here after. Moon Day has been a real eye-opener for me. Um, I came here without really knowing a, a lot about what to expect. I'd met Kenneth before, um, and he really impressed me with a, with a number of things. First of all, you have a very innovative style of working. I love the way that you've created a, an environment that's conducive for innovation. I love the way that you've created a whole bunch of techniques uh, to help companies think differently about the way that they work. It's very important that we that we don't see management innovation as a short-term tool for you know, improved financial point performance. If that were anybody's thought, that kind of misses the point of it. The financial performance is important, but that is the scorecard, it is not the game, if you see what I mean. And, and we mustn't confuse the scorecard and the game. We've got to say to ourselves, what is the game we're trying to win here? Is it about customer satisfaction? Is it about making a, a great you know, life for our employees? I mean, any number of goals are valid. And it's often difficult when you're a speaker to wonder what impact you're having. But as the day progressed and the results came out from the groups around the table, I realised that Julian and I had really made an impact and that's very good for me. I feel uh, I enjoy that. And I'm going away from here with a lot of ideas that I've learned from a lot of other people as well. Um, I've always been guided in a lot of my thinking about how do I feel about what's happening to me in the situation I'm in and how would I prefer, how is somebody going to get the best out of me? So, and that's always been the guiding principle. How do you feel you would like people to treat you in the workplace? What is going to encourage you to give of your best?